Lauren Greenfield is here right now joining us, who, how <laughs> did you get this kind of access into kids in their world? Because there are points where I'm like, this must be a reenactment. There's no way she's actually there in the mosh pit. And I'm like, nope, she's there. And I'm wondering, do you think it was an added benefit that kids are so voyeuristic, narcissistic exhibitionist that uh, your camera didn't phase them at all um, because they're all filming each other. Well, I think kids are much more used to the camera, but the really interesting thing in this project is they really brought themselves. Like when we were sitting in group, when we did the interviews, they were so honest and raw and truthful and very different than when they're using the camera on their phone. And so what I tried to do in the show, first of all, the most important part about the show was we had access to what was on their phones. We figured out how to get the material. And so we see in the show these different perspectives. We see the way they present, how they present to other kids, how they present online, but then they break the wall and kind of tell the truth to our camera and also to each other. Social studies is a brilliant double entendre <laughs> title too that you chose. It really just nails it. And here's a subject that I never hear brought up enough. What do we do about the fact that schools now rely all on Google portals? Anyone heard of a little thing, a little search engine called Google? Well, that gives you access to everything. They have Google Chromebooks which have limited access, but everything is transferring to portals in schools. How do we have a prophylactic protection from our kids with how the school curriculum functions and how we as parents have a relationship with our kids and their phones? Because they're separate issues, but they're all being lumped in together. Well, I need to have the smartphone to get into the Google portal. And I, I have very strong feelings about that. My belief is that technology is not bad. It can help us. We rely on technology today to make our lives better. But we've got to make sure that there are basic safety standards in that technology so that our kids get the benefit and not the harm. I have a very taboo question, but you are the person to ask. Now, there is a major push for parents to have their kids have access to phones in schools because of the epidemic in our country of school shootings. I believe that all children should have phones. I think what we've come, what I've really come to realize is there's a difference between a phone and a smartphone. And so I'm wondering, is there any hope, any company out there, anyone, I'm telling you, you've got a business <laughs> model and a margin that is gonna blow up because we're all looking for this. Where and who is going to create something that is a phone? that maybe takes the best of technology, the T's and M's, TM, tech, talk, track, um, and music maps, memories, memories being photos. But if we could design an actual device that we could unify behind, where is that device? I'm begging everyone to make it. I actually think this is a really reasonable way to think about it, which is you're asking the basic question, how do we use technology, the good parts of it, to help us, and how do we avoid the harms? And to do that, we have to really approach it with the fundamental goal in mind of safety and benefit. And I just gotta say to parents out, out there, the parents I worry are just dealing with so much stress and guilt right now as they struggle to manage everything that has been placed on their shoulders. Parents are dealing with all the old stuff that parent has made parenting stressful for generations, but now they're having to manage this new technology uh, that they didn't grow up with. They're having to also deal with this epidemic of gun violence, which you might think, well, how many people does that really affect? I'll tell you, in the report we just issued two months ago on gun violence, more than half of Americans, 54%, say that they have been directly affected in some way by gun violence. And that could mean either they were shot, a family member of theirs was shot or killed, uh, due to gun violence. You think about the ripple effects this has on the mental health and well-being of our country. So every time you go to drop your kid off of school, if this is what's on your mind, of course you're gonna worry uh, about safety. And it's one of the reasons why we work to get technology that's safer for our kids. We also have to address some of these very real threats in their life, like gun violence, which is stealing not only the physical health, but the mental health of millions of Americans. But the one thing I do know is that none of us can do this work alone. 
I know that the wor world makes us feel like as parents that we've got to have it all figured out. We've got to know yeah. what extracurriculars our kids have to do, what classes they have to take, like, you know, exactly how to protect them on every front. But the truth is none of us have all the answers. So what we have to do is what we've done, frankly, for millennia, which is work together as parents, support one another. What worries me the most is that we have lost our villages. We have man come to a position where we're trying to manage all this on our own. And this is an unreasonable expectation. So if you're a parent out there who's feeling shame or guilt around not being able to manage everything for your kids by themselves, um, just please know that you're not alone. We're all struggling. And that talking to other parents about their challenges is not only good for you, it is really good for them because they can help open up a conversation. So no shame in needing each other, no shame in needing support. Parenting is a team sport. It really and is. we should look at it that way. Yes, we do. There's a lot of work to do. So watch Lauren's new documentary series, Social Studies on FX with your kids. Dr. Morthy and Lauren, I just can't thank you enough for this conversation of my lifetime, honestly. Thank you. We will be right back. I got you.